three entries, three entries on the right-hand side. The uh, and I, I will say this, uh, Grievous, you know what this thing is. This is a mind flayer, and you know you thought that these creatures were just myth, but this thing stands up, purple skin, four tentacles kind of writhing around its mouth, big bulbous purple eyes. And he sets down that uh, that intellect of ours because you could tell what that was too, that that walking brain. So what do you guys do? Uh, have you I been were, seen yet? You have been seen by the mind flayer, yes, but you have not been seen by by the orc. He's still you know telling Floon that he's gonna beat the hell out of him, and your dad's gonna pay handsomely. And he keeps saying, "Oh, I'm not Floon. You've, I'm not Raynor. You've got the you've got the wrong person." I keep trying to tell you, and you know I'm the gonna, mind flare stands run. up. I'm gonna run in and and yell, "We gotta get out of here." There's like 30 of them. They're calling themselves FBI. We got to get the heck out of here. And I just faint next to the orc. <laughs> you faint next to the orc? All right, good. Yeah. So just, what do you do, Seraphine? Throw a deception. They can see me, right? Yeah, they can Fortunately. see you. And you're not Damn. in one of the disguises, yeah. And so you just fall down and you are prone right beside, right beside of uh, Grimshin. He says, "What are you doing? You're you're not supposed to be in here. You're supposed to be back with the others. Why are you not on patrol? What's going on? You said there's thirty of them. What are you What are you talking about?" And that's when he looks around and sees Seraphina and Wukrath. But the mind flare, because he had seen the mind flare stand up, so that's that's why everything kind of. So at yeah. that, I will look behind my shoulder and say, Alpha Team, we have found the suspects. Contact Beta and Gamma to get over here quickly. As if there's more <laughs> oh my of God. us. Are we still playing Starfinder? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, FBI! Now is a good time to yell it. So as you say that... FBI! And all this is happening simultaneously, and Grumshar, he turns back around and he says, he says... Nihilor, get out of here. I'll stop them. And it looks like the, the Mind Flayer stands up, and it looks like he starts to bolt towards that double door. So everybody, roll initiative! God, this is what, our fourth combat tonight? What is yeah, going is on? <laughs> yeah. Hope you guys don't mind me kind of accelerating things. No, I don't mind at all. It's, it's fun. <laughs> We're kind of making up for all the other weeks of not playing. Yeah. All right, so initiatives have been rolled. You are in the presence of a mind flayer. So this intellect devourer, with its squishy, squishing sound, it starts to move. It, you know, it, it moves through the orc. And starts to move back to, and it's squishing the whole time, and it's leaving these little, this little trail of slime behind it as it just kind of moves and and scurries over towards you. So let's see. I think I've got enough movement to get over there and get like 30 attacks on on you. I think. Oh yeah, I got plenty of movement. 40 feet. Yeah. You know. So this thing is going to move and claw at you because it it actually it it gets up on its like kind of hind legs and and just kind of squashes at you a couple times. And as it as it as it makes its attack, it makes like a a squishy sound, like a. So its first slash at you is a 14 and is a hit. So Seraphina, you're going to take nine. You're heavily damaged, and then it attacks you again. Uh, and it hits again. Oh boy. Oh, you go down. You are going to death and dying saving throw, Seraphina. So, oh. yeah, on your turn, you Ball will go tits. down. That sucks. Yeah. Oh, boy. So, let's see. That thing moved 5, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And then this thing kind of just moves over in the corner. All right, Greaves. What say you as you're prone? You say the, the uh, Mind Flayer, do you say he left? Or is he actually still in there? No, he's no, he's still there. It looks like he he, well, you heard him as you dropped prone. Grumshar said, "Quick, Nelor, get out of here. I'll hold them at bay." 
And then he looks over right. towards you and he says, we've got to take these guys out. We can't let them get Nihilor. Oh, I, I was pretending to faint and be non-responsive next to him. As well. Oh, okay. Then, then yeah, he's looking over and then he says, are you okay? And he's like, hey, hey, are you okay? And he just keeps shaking and he goes, Jesus. He goes, it looks like I'm all by myself. <laughs> and then he turns well, and it looks like he's going to fight. I'm going to ready an action then. Um, if, um, well, if the mind flare actually gets out of the out of the room, I will... Um, try to attack the orc. Okay, you're playing dead till uh, till Nihilor leaves, huh? <laughs> well, we'll we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it we goes. will see. Yeah. So you can hold an action, and when you're ready to attack the orc at any time, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. All right, Wukrath. What say you as you're screaming FBI about going FBI! into the room? So yeah, you've seen. You seen uh, your party member Serafina go down by that walking brain. Um, I would like to use as my bonus action, divine favor, favor. Yeah. Oh, divine favor. Yeah. Favra. Favra. Brett Favra. Uh, do I like drop it on myself or? Yeah, so what that is is your prayer empowers you with divine radiance, and until the spell ends, your weapon attacks deal an extra 1d4 radiant damage. So that's what you'll do. You'll just take that uh, effect and just drop it right on your token. And that's your bonus uh, action. And I'll move. Forward. All right. Nice use of a uh, divine favor. So you can go ahead and move. Oh, you're moving in. Ah, -ha -ha. the intellectual, uh, well, the intellectual devourer will take a stab at you, will take a claw at you as you run by uh, with an attack of opportunity. So that is one of the rare cases as you run by. Let's see if it slashes at you and hits. It's a run by squelching. Oh, definitely not. Yeah, you, you get right up to the orc. And uh, the intellectual devourer, it quick, quick, makes that squishy noise as it attacks you, and it misses. And now you are engaged with Grumshar, the half-orc. Uh, I'll use my longsword and attack him. Sure. He says, I'm going to put you down, Dragonborn. Send you back that. to the abyss. I'm pretty sure. I think I am. As you hit him with your longsword. Look at that. You do ten. And he and <laughs> you kill him in one shot. And he says, kill them, Nilor. And then he passes out. Pff, he just, he dies. So good job. Do you, uh, you have any other movement? Nice. Um, I have five, so I'll just move right here. She's got uh. four. Oh, wah, wah. Serafina, first saving throw. Oh, first death success roll. Is it successful? Dantes, what say you? Dantes is like, I mean, uh, Wukrath is like, we're going to stop this mind flare. I have to go there. Okay. You move there. Yeah, and you can see the, the the mind flare. I mean, you're an intelligence based caster. You you would know what that thing looks like. Uh, you see the intellectual devourer. It does not attack you. It's uh, it's already attacked. Yeah. So it. Um, I I am a charisma based caster. Uh, my int is actually kind of a dump stat. So, but I will uh, toss a dagger over here at this uh, little brain that had taken out Seraphina. Okay. Sorry, Seraphina, I don't have a healing spell for you. I got a hit. That's a hit with uh, your thrown dagger, 17. All right, so you hit the intellect devourer, and uh, yeah, you, you do some little bit of damage to it. Your dagger doesn't quite stick in the spongy brain. Aeptor, what say you, Aeptor? Uh, I want to move up to <clears throat> Serafina, and I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on her. 
Okay. Oh, look at you. All right. All right. You start to come to Seraphine as you see the light again, and and you see the the, the big furbolg standing over you, as he as you know you could tell that he actually brought you back. Yeah, but it's still not the first thing I want to see when I come back. <laughs> big nasty furbolg, probably drooling all over you, <laughs> dripping into your mouth and stuff. Oh, what do you have to go there? <laughs> I, I don't know. I just had to do that. Anything else for you, Eptor? Yeah, as a free action, I'm going to take out a little notebook from my pocket, and uh, I'm going to scribble something into it. <laughs> I feel on... like this like a bill later. It's like, here you go, doctor's bill. November 17th, the DM is being a severe jerk to me. Mental note. <laughs> no, no, it's like ig ignore the dying tiefling next time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> note to self. All right. So let's go to uh, the Mind Flare. Stand it is already standing up. And the Mind Flare points towards you, Wukrath. And... Wukrath, you are you are just you, you just freeze up. You can't even move. You you didn't even not even needed a saving throw, and you freeze up, and you're trying to move and you're trying to speak. You're trying to scream, and this mind flare just gently walks over past you, opens up the door, walks through it, closes it, and then you hear it lock, click. <laughs> But you're still you're still frozen. So Grumshar, Grumshar's good old Grumshar's dead. So Floon, what say you? Well, Dave. Floon stands up, and Floon says, "Oh, thank you so much for for saving me." And he uh, he runs over to you, Wukrath. And he starts to, to hug you, and he goes, "Oh, thank you so much! You you saved my life!" And he's all beat up, and he's he's like kissing on you and stuff on your cheek, and he's kissing you on the forehead. And he goes, "Thanks so much! You saved me from a perilous death. I I I thought I was a goner, and you're frozen, so you can't do anything." And and Floon just he starts to stagger around, and then he just kind of goes back to his knees and uh, falls back into a prone position. And and he seems like he just kind of passes out. So uh, anybody else? What do you guys want to do? This this intro, intellect devourer disappears, just kind of vanishes. So did Floon use his turn to make out with Wukraft? Floon, yeah, he he thanked Wukraft for saving him. He's passed out. He's passed out, yeah. You're still prone, so Greaves, what are you doing? Well, and there's nothing here except uh, us, so I'm going to go over to Wukraft and see what's going on with him, see if I can uh, get any... Hey, guys, let's get the heck out of here. I do not want to be <sighs> messing with mind flares. You're <laughs> floon, right? <gasps> so, oh! 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 Yeah, I'm I'm floon. Uh, <sighs> oh, a little. Uh, hey, floon, you're really lucky. You got a rich Cywolf. friend. Let's get you out of here, bud. Oh, what I rich have friend? A, a dagger. Oh, what what rich friend? Uh, oh, are you talking about R Rainier? No, Volo. He's paying us a lot of money to save your sorry skin. Let's go. Volo, oh, he's not rich. He's he's broke. Oh! You shouldn't have told us that. Uh, uh, would he? Oh, oh! Well, I, I'm really not feeling myself right now. What? what what's your name? Mm -hmm. what, what? What's your name? I'm Dantes. So, did my dagger like fall out of the um, intellect of hour as he disappeared, or did yeah. I lose a dagger? No, as you as it disappeared, it kind of just like fell onto the floor. Click. Okay. Good enough. Yeah, you can get that back. 
oh, thank you so much. And, he, and then Floon, he, he kind of comes to, and then he, I'm going to unlock the tokens for you guys. He comes over to you, and he starts he starts hugging and kissing you too, Dante. No, get off of me. Don't, oh, don't. Oh. I'm not, I'm straight. Get off of oh. me. Oh, let's, just, let's, uh, oh, oh. let's get out of here, guys. You don't, you don't have what I'm looking for. And he, he says, I'm just very appreciative. Oh, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll give him a, I'll give him a little swig of my brandy to try to like bring him to or just give him oh. a give his nerves a little shirt. Oh that that hit that hit the spot. Oh thank you. Um let's let's get you out of here before uh that mind flare comes back or like eats all of our brains. Oh I I thought he was gonna. He had like a, he had a an orb on, on top of this. It it was some weird type of wand, and the, this orb would pulse, and he 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 would put it up to my mind, and oh, it was just it, it was it was terrible. Oh, I I thought I was a goner. I didn't know how much more of this torture that I could take. Thank you so much. I, I love all of you. And he starts going over to all of you and, and like kissing you and kissing you on the forehead. And I'm not talking about, you know, I'm just talking like grateful, gracious kissing. He's, he's thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh you come, you come to Wukrath about probably say, about a minute or so, you come to. You just kind of snap out of it, and you're like, "Oh, oh your gosh. muscles are a little sore from being frozen." But yeah, you're you're okay. Oh, that was the weirdest experience I've ever felt. I'm not talking about the freezing. I'm talking about um, <laughs> Flume kissing me on the head. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, I'm gonna yeah, bore. Yeah, that was that was pretty creepy. <laughs> so there there are some more sleeping quarters in here, and I'm gonna. I'm going to uncover all this stuff for you guys right here in, in this uh, throne room. Yeah, these are these are pretty much uh, just passages. And everybody give me a – I'm sure you guys are going to search, so why don't you guys go ahead and give me an investigation check. And then there are, you know, straw pallets in the, the, two, uh, the two rooms, the middle room and the southern room. Uh, there are straw pallets, like I said, rusty manacles where these are probably prison cells this one time. Uh, and I will I will tell you this, uh, Seraphine, as you're looking around this northern room, uh, you do find a crawl space that travels north, uh, travels basically travels this direction, and it's a uh, it's very rough hewn. It's not. It, it looks like it was just hand chiseled out. And it, it looks like it, it and it goes north and it and it continues to go uh, out of your out of your range of uh, dark vision. Can I fit in this crawl space or am I too big? No, you can fit in it. No, for sure. No, you can definitely. No, actually, you're light because you are blind as well because you don't have dark vision. I was like, I don't think tieflings have dark vision. So, but yeah, you can crawl in there. You know, you got your torch. And... Tieflings do. I have a dark vision oh, of do? 60 feet. Oh, you yeah. do. I'm sorry. I, it's I... Dragonborn that you're. Yeah. Because yeah, Dragonborn are my favorite uh, race in, in 5e. Well, I don't know. Yeah. The, the Goblin's pretty awesome too. So, GM, well, thanks a lot. Hey, have a good one. Good to see you. Come on, yeah. what about, uh, what about, um... Half-elves? I think uh, they gnomes. should all be thrown gnomes. into no, the No, not, not half -elves. gnomes. Gnomes. Come gnomes? On, mm. Yeah. Gnomes are okay, yeah. Time is money, friend! Remember those little gnomes in a world? Yeah. I think I like everybody gnomes. hates gnomes. I don't know. I'm I like gnomes. They're okay. But yeah, you, could, like you can easily find a crawl space. And it, and it goes, it travels probably about... 60, 80, 90 feet to the north. And then you have this double door. So what say you, adventurers? So you have a, a secret passageway that goes to the north. You have two other, looks like prison cells with shackle, rusty shackles and uh, mattresses. You also have the double door. And also, Greaves, you find a sack that is up here as you go up the five foot steps onto the, the raised platform that's behind the throne, you actually see a bag that's kind of tucked over in the corner. 
I'll take that. Yeah, it's a, it's a not too bad of a, it's not too weighty. I mean, you can definitely tell it's got, a, it's got something in it. That's for sure. You cut out there. It definitely um, has something in it. It's not too heavy, but it has something in it. You can definitely tell. It has a couple of items in it. I'll let the party know about the crawl space that I found it. Okay. What kind of items do we got here? You look into the bag and you see a rather large spell book. And you also see a chest. Like a little wooden chest. I will just, um, you know, put these aside for now, keep them on my person, and sure. I want to read. Okay, that sounds good. Did that orc have anything interesting on him? He did not. Did not. Secret passage is my vote. Uh, my vote is get the heck out of here. So if you think that's a way to get out, let's go. Dante, you guys, do you think there's any truth uh, to the um, the thing the goblin said about there being twenty uh, goblins? Uh, I'm a little more worried about the mind flare. Uh, did you not notice him? I did, but uh, depending on which way we go, we're going to either run into him or goblins. I'm guessing. Uh, let's go through this passageway then. If everyone's for the passage. I say let's go. If you're ready to get out, why not just go back the way we came? No, I'm not going through the secret passage. I'm going after that little purple beast that froze me. Um, I don't think that's a good idea at all. It's revenge. I know, but he could kill you. It's worth it, at least. How is it worth it if he kills you? It's worth it to me. <laughs> oh, was this on? Oh, that was sorry. on, Dave. That was on, I'm sorry. <laughs> For what it's worth, I would like to at least try to pick the lock. I'm not going to go through it, but I want to see if I can pick that lock. Sure, on the double door, yeah. Give me a thieves' tool check in the dice tower. So we've got a couple of people want to go to the secret passage. So I see two people voted for it. Uh, and also Greaves is over at the door. You very easily pick that. Uh, you pick the lock very easily, and you peer open the door, and this is what you see. You see a rather large, oddly shaped, actually a really oddly shaped room. You cut out. Yeah, it's an oddly shaped room. And uh, in the middle of this room, there is a stone pillar that you can see. And on this small uh, pillar, well, on this pillar, there is a small symbol. And it's the symbol that you've already seen, that perfect circle with the ten radiant spokes uh, protruding outward from it. Okay, I relay that to the group. And if and everyone can, else is for the secret passage, then I'm just going to go with that. You can see another room here, and then you can see some stairs ascending up about ten feet. No I saw mind flare. A shaped room, stairs, and a door, and an interesting pillar with that same, uh, that same symbol that we saw. Do the stairs go up or down? Dave. They go up. They ascend up about ten feet. Go well, up going up, up sounds feet. good. I say we check out the secret passage and then explore the rest when we get done with where that passage is going. Now I agree with that. Okay. All right. That's cool. All right. Let's go down uh, the, the passage then. Okay. So you, uh, uh, you, go, you go first. Here, carry this torch. All right. So put your tokens in order from where uh, Serafina is, or that's even, that's even better yet, Dante's. Uh, and you guys can start crawling down that passageway as I cave it in on you and we'll game for tonight I, oh, this thing is on again oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> man I've been shot out of a can in the last I'm just happy to be playing regularly again guys you guys just have no clue man it's been so fun the last weeks you know being able to play again 
All right, so as you guys get to the end, uh, this is like a cellar. As you guys come to the end, you open up the secret door, which actually looks like it was paper mache with like this stone material on it. And you can hear some, you can hear some noise in there. And you can hear some pounding. And yeah, as, as you, as you look, there's this big row of barrels and you can see a halfling pounding on like this big beer keg that's sitting on a stand. And you can see him as he taps the keg and then he puts a cup under it and then it, he starts to fill up the cup and then he drinks it and then he turns behind him and on the wall there's like a clipboard and then he takes this clipboard and then he just starts writing on it and he looks the pencil and starts writing on the on the clipboard and then he tastes it again and then he then he breaks out this like little like this little kit and he starts pouring in some of the what looks to be some type of ale that he's possibly crafting and he's dip in he's you know putting a little bit in these meters and well in these beakers and he's adding some more chemicals some eye drops and uh looks like he's making beer and kind of writing down all of the numbers and he doesn't see you because he's so involved into his work i'll kind of stay quiet and uh wait for him to leave the area Sure. After about another five minutes or so, he leaves the area, and you can hear him taking some steps, sort of like maybe going up some stairs. Okay. Well, it, it looks like we found a way out, guys, at least. Uh, we're under some kind of tavern or brewery or something. You can go ahead and send Floon ahead with those guys if you want. I'm going to stay behind and keep an eye on this door yeah. since I'm still in disguise. Okay. Yeah, and, and inside this, there's also a bunch of stuff that's cluttered up kind of all around this brewery. And there's, you know, all kinds of keg stands and there's all kinds of tools and other stuff too. Brooms and all kinds of like big mixer tools and, yeah. So, so it looks like we can we can get out of here to the surface or keep exploring the the Xanathar's hideout here, guys. So, what's oh, everybody's so vote? I um, Dante wants to get out of here. He saw the the uh, mindful air and he's he's done. But what does everyone else want? I'll explore through the double doors. Um, I had a feeling. I have a feeling that if the if the mind flare wanted to fight, he would have stayed in the fight. I think he escaped. But I'd like to see what else is down here. I'll explore. I'm feeling confident as well. Okay, so let's uh, let's send um, Floon up through here and just say, hey, <sighs> just, it's, it's a bar of some kind, so you just pretend like you were a patron and were drinking and, uh, you know, I think your pathway is clear. It, it's just some halflings. They're, they're oh. generally pretty, pretty. Yeah, so he sh he shimmies his way past everybody, of course, giving you guys thankful kisses on the way. And as he stands up in the cellar, he goes, Oh, oh, I know exactly where we're at. We're at, we're at the Peabody's. The Peabody's Brewery. Oh, I wish I could only take a keg of this ale home with me now. And he starts to pick up one of the kegs. He's like, he's like trying to lift it up. He, oh, oh, it's, you know, it's just a little too heavy. And, as he's doing that, that halfling comes back around the corner and says, "What? What in the heck is? What in the heck is going on in here?" And he sees uh, he sees Floon there, and he goes, "Sir, you can't be down here." And and so these two start conversing, and he says, "How did you get down here? I, I was just..." And then he sees the secret hole in the wall, and he goes, "Well, golly gee, I had no clue that there was a secret passage in the wall." Oh, can I do and an then, insight check on that. Sure. Yeah, you can. Oh, that's that's great. That's a great. Yeah, give me an insight check. Yeah, you think he's telling the truth? He seems genuine, and he gets down there and he he starts looking in and he says, "Whoa! Well, by golly gee, there's more of you down there." Hello. My name is Brutus. Brutus Peabody at your service. 
I did not know that this was a secret passage. I'm going to have, I can't have anyone sealing our, our famous Peabody's brew. I'm going to have to seal this up. Yeah, you really should. This leads to a Xanathar's Thieves Guild hideout, so you, you should probably <gasps> fix this wall. <gasps> well, We're about a hundred feet away from a mine flake. A, a, a what? A mind? I've never heard of that. What is that? Some type of dungeon-dwelling monster? I've never heard of that. Now, if you start talking about barleys and hops and, and uh, purified waters, I'd be all into that conversation. And I would love to have an intellectual conversation with you on making some fine brews. Perhaps later. Oh, who was that? So many, how many of you are in there? Well, come on out if you're going to come out. Don't, don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of Brutus here. I'm, I'm as, I'm as harmless as a mouse. So uh, I'll, I'll go brewer. out and, and uh, talk to him for a little bit and just explain, you know, what, what was going on and say, uh, you know, you're not associated with the uh, Xanathar's Guild. I I am not uh, I'm not involved with those rough and tumbles in any way, shape, or form. And uh, what what part of the the city, what ward or is your establishment in? I've been traveling oh. underground, so I'm not sure where we're at. Oh, you are my friend. You are in the dock ward. We make our home here in Fish Gut Alley. Surely you've heard of the famous Fish Gut Alley where oh, well, course, our establishment is, around, right? So. We have the most famous yeah. – uh, oh, good. Because we do, we've do. we been voted for uh, four years straight. We are the best beer in all of the dock ward. The longer you talk, Dantes, the thirstier I get. Oh, well, please have a sample. I was just test, tasting and testing a sample. Would you, would you, like, a, uh, would you like some of our, our bitter uh, brew? It's, it's, that. don't let the name deceive you. It is truly not bitter, I, I assure you. And he starts getting, he says, how many of you, oh, you look a little too young to drink, young man, so we will not give you anything. Here's a, here's some water, and he's talking to you, Wugrath. <laughs> the what? You look a little too young to sit up at the I'm bar older yet. Than oh. Than Oh, you just sound so young. How old are you, Mr. Dragonborn? I am thirty-two. Oh. Hey. Well, your 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 voice makes you sound younger than what you are. So here you go. Here is a here is a. Well, <laughs> at thirty-two, heaven heaven and, heaven for murder. And Dragonborn, you hit your puberty at fifty-two. <laughs> <Jeez>. so. <laughs> Oh, uh, so okay. Anyways, uh, that's a conversation for later. As he gets everybody a flagon of the of the bitter brew, and he says, "Huh? Huh? How is it? How is it? This has been sitting for about six months already. It should be just right." It's very nice. This All counts right. as a short rest, right? I sure, so. <laughs> I would say it would count as a short. Yeah, we'll say that it counts for a short rest. Absolutely. It's good. Yeah, if you guys want to, I'm thinking Serafina probably wants to use some hit At dice rolls, hit maybe. Dice, yeah, yeah. go ahead them. and do that. Yeah, uh, and also as you guys are kind of sitting here enjoying the the moment with old Brutus Peabody's, you look to see what's in that box in that bag. I'm sure you probably want to know. Of course. All right, so let's give you guys a little bit more XP as well. Another 105 apiece for those encounters. And let's see. In the chest, in the little wooden chest, there are two potions of healing, which I will go ahead and add to the party sheet. There's two potions of healing. You guys would know what they look like. There's also 16 gold, 82 silver, 250 copper. And in the sack, there is a spell book. And I would say that, I would say, Dante, seeing that you are the pure intelligence, uh, 
you know, magician in this. Uh, give me a, give me a, a, you can give me an arcane check. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Oh, you you definitely know. Wow, how are you? Oh, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, you're fine. I, yeah, I'm not an uh, intelligence caster, so. So yeah, uh, you're well. Any yeah, you're magic, so you would be based off charisma. I'm sorry about that, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, next time you just roll uh, charisma for an intelligence base for this type of you know you get what I'm saying. Okay. But anyway, yeah, sure. you can you can basically translate the runes because you know spell books. You know they're wizards. They have even though you're not a wizard, you don't have a spell book. You know that this is the he's an apprentice wizard. And this is Grumshar's Apprentice Wizard Spellbook. And it has some spells in it. It has uh, it has a bunch of blank pages as well. Uh, you can, uh, let's see. Let me see what spells you can actually... Uh, and in fact, we'll say that part of that check, uh, you know that there's the Burning Hand spell in here, Disguise Self, False Life, Shield, Unseen Servant, and Witch Bolt. And you know... Back at uh, no, yeah, you you know that this is just his spell book, and he doesn't have it anymore. So he's basically nice. S O L. Yes. Well, he's dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. What? Yeah, but it's yeah, but it's valuable. So yeah, that's what I you could probably about. sell it. Yeah. What does probably S O L mean? A little bit. Uh, yeah, it means uh, matter. yeah. It means uh, so out of luck. Nice save there, Dave. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Well played, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Well played. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for the follows. I appreciate it. hope you guys are enjoying the game. So, yeah, you guys, uh, you guys, you guys find a, a book. You guys find some money. You find a couple of healing potions. You found those paper birds. Uh, you found the paintings. So what do you guys want to do? Do you guys want to go back into the hideout, or do you want to head back to the yawning portal? Hideout. I want to check on... Uh, oh, the four. Let me, get, let me get two cans of those beers. Cans? I mean, barrels. Another... Barrels? Says, you can't carry these barrels, young man. I can. They're well, too I'll heavy. One under each arm. <laughs> uh, these things are like hundreds of pounds, so. Yeah. Oh god, I need five. I need four of you to help me. Everybody, grab a corner. Let's find a wheelbarrow. Are you looting Peabody's? Uh, this is that 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 barrel's not for sale. We have to have that to make money at our establishment. You well, should know that. Can I at least that. have one more drink of the beer? I will give you one more. I will give you one more glass of the ale, and will not charge you anything. And he fills up your cup again. I say in uh, uh, halfling to the halfling. Well, um, I think I think you may owe us a little something for letting you know this uh, secret tunnel was here. I I think you could be right. How about uh, your drinks are on us for the next month? Yay. I'm going to come here every day. It's just one more uh, or one less gold I have to spend on drink. Or however we'll take, much it costs. <laughs> yeah, we'll take care of the bill for you for the next month. Hey, I, I think you might see me around here all, all the time now. And I did <laughs> that in writing. Yeah. Yeah, you guys can come back anytime you want to Peabody's and have a drink. So what do you guys think? Do you want to get out of here? He says, if you'd like to leave, you're more than welcome. I'll, I'll take you through the kitchen and lead you out the front door if you'd like. But I've got to get that. I've got to get this uh, sealed up. Oh, I didn't know that that was there. So it looks like we'll send Floon through, but we'll keep, uh, we'll keep exploring uh, the dungeon down here. But okay. yeah, definitely seal this wall up as soon as you can. Okay, sounds good. He says, oh, most definitely, said, And hopefully we'll see you here at the tavern. We'll come through the front door next time. 
<laughs> oh, well, that would be good, because I don't... Uh, you, you do seem pretty stout. You're not as stout as a stout halfling, such as myself. But uh, I'm sure you could probably break through. But please, don't tell anybody about that secret little passage. I don't want anyone coming down here and stealing all of our brew. Why don't I we keep this open for now and set some kind of password in case anyone's trying to come through? Because we want an escape out of here, right? I mean, if we have to come back. Oh, well, he's, he's not going to get it fixed today. Well, I I'm always down it, here. So, so if it, what, what do you want the password to be? Something like uh, Doc Ward Clam Chowder, maybe? Peabody's. Sherman. Oh, oh.